what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out negative thousand percent kayfabe flaws in wwe now we have seen this time and time again in wwe and not even just wwe wrestling in general there'll be moments where you're like wait a minute that doesn't make sense <clears throat> there's situations or actions that happen where you're just like wait how how is this possible how is this person here just fine when they just had a, a match that essentially killed them for example uh the whole zombie lumber lumberjack match if you guys remember that i think miz and damian priest was in it god awful uh, apparently the miz got devoured by zombies and we saw him on tv relatively within i don't know if it was like the next uh, next show on raw or smackdown i don't know it was relatively soon he was devoured by zombies and then he came back like nothing happened never made sense this that never made sense to me so and i don't think it made sense to anybody else i, I know supposed to suspend our dis disbelief but my man got devoured so he shouldn't be here no more but we're gonna check out some of them instances where <laughs> definitely it didn't make sense someone <laughs> damn near <laughs> got murdered on live television and they were back the next week or a couple of weeks weeks later so should be a good one appreciate all love support let's get right into it the biggest flaws in WWE. Number 11, how talent can evade security. Whenever a fan jumps over the barricade, mm -hmm. it usually takes the WWE security team a few seconds to bring the fan down to the ground. Yeah. However, when a WWE talent who's not scheduled for the particular match jumps the barricade, the security yep. is nowhere to be seen. Additionally, wrestlers somehow have the ability to move towards the front of the barricade without any yep. security member asking them their business. And WWE are somewhat trying to combat this in recent years in the most comedic way imaginable. Whenever Solo Sokoa has interfered in mm -hmm. Roman Reigns' matches, he has sported a standard black hoodie. And that's the ultimate black hoodie. The hoodie that once you put it on, you're basically invisible. Your invisibility attributes go up to 100 especially if you, have, if you have the hood up now if you have the hood down your visibility goes down like your invisibility stats drop to like a cool 55 but you're still somewhat invisible it's, it's crazy it's insane it's to avoid detection this means that in theory if a fan wore a black hoodie they'll be able to sneak up right up to the ringside yep. area yep. number 10 wrestlers are put under a spell oh wrestling is filled God. with outdated tropes and one of them is that wrestlers are always distracted by entrance music yep. this distraction is always so significant that the wrestler stops whatever they're doing even if they're about to win a major match mm -hmm. take for instance at the money in the bank 2019 oh mustafa ali had his literal hands on the money in the bank briefcase a trope that makes a little sense from a kayfabe oh this they probably had to cut it out but if you guys don't know uh ali had the money in the brain bank briefcase in his hands brock lesnar music hit and instead of him just all right that's cool bro and then unhooking and winning he sat there and looked at brock because he was in utter shock as he was about to unlatch it but didn't unlatch it he just sat there just like oh my god it was, it, uh, it was, it was stupid. <laughs> Effective is usually booked when a wrestler costs another wrestler a match. A wrestler's theme will play or the wrestler will come out on the ramp and the wrestler will be so thrown off by this mental distraction that it'll cost them the match. WWE have, to their credit, been trying to limit angles of this nature, and for good reason, as they yeah. do nobody any favors, and there are much more creative and logical ways to incorporate distractions and interference Back. into key matches. Number nine, the police let WWE wrestlers commit heinous crimes. This is very Throughout true. Throughout the history of WWE, <laughs> they've delivered numerous angles where the police have gotten involved and proceeded to arrest a wrestler for committing a serious crime. However, it's never been made clear as to why the police pick and choose when to intervene in WWE's business. <laughs> Numerous this. heinous crimes have been committed in WWE programming, <laughs> including attempted murder, and yes. police have never been remotely interested. Yes. This was somewhat directly addressed in 1999 during the feud between Vince McMahon and The Undertaker. When McMahon called the police to seek assistance as the dead man was about to invade his home, the relevant police department accused McMahon and WWE of delivering a publicity stunt. Number eight, you're in a blood <laughs> wow. feud. 
one of the most frustrating things about pro wrestling, particularly WWE, is when two wrestlers are in the midst of a heated, intense rivalry, and when the eventual matchup occurs, the two lock up. Mm -hmm. A lock up is a traditional starting off point of a wrestling match, and it shows a sign of mutual respect. However, when it comes to blood feuds and payoffs to the feud in question, a lock up should definitely not happen first. The two wrestlers. This is a very, very uh, interesting trope. Very interesting trope right here because he he makes it, it it makes sense if these guys like you see this image right here this is triple h randy orton i believe wrestlemania 25 blood feud like the dude triple h broke into randy orton's crib randy orton uh had fucking uh attacked stephanie mcmahon attacked his wife while triple h was handcuffed and kissed her while she was unconscious like he was on some demon time. This honestly should have been a no holds bar, anything goes type of match. It should have just been anything goes for everybody involved. But it wasn't. Like, what, why are we trying to lock up? There's no lockups here. When, when the bell rings, it's chaos. That's all we need. Wrestlers should be throwing everything they can at their arch nemesis and delivering a standard lockup makes no sense whatsoever. Facts. This was the case in 2018 when bitter enemies Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins collided at the TLC event. Uh -huh. Even though the feud was red hot and both men wanted to rip each other apart, they started the match with a lockup and traditional chain wrestling. Yeah. Quite rightly, this sequence was scolded by fans as it simply made no sense and it was hardly a surprise that fans in attendance heavily turned on the match. Yeah. Number 7, The Undertaker's Selective Powers <laughs> Supernatural characters are hard to deliver effectively, yet WWE struck gold when it came to The Undertaker. Facts. Taker was insanely dedicated to the character for 30 years mm -hmm. and in turn helped create one of the strongest characters in pro wrestling history. A lot of the elements of the character worked across numerous eras, yet this didn't mean that everything made logical sense from a kayfabe perspective. <laughs> Take for instance the Undertaker's powers such as summoning lightning, yeah. the dead man only seemed to do this for certain segments, yet when it came to actual 1v1 matches, the dead man usually decided to abandon any supernatural powers. Surely, if The Undertaker was so powerful, he could use his supernatural powers during no DQ style matches to pick up an easy win. Yeah. This was never addressed on WWE programming. When you really think about it. Oh, my, my bad. Like, y'all couldn't even see the entire time. I'm sorry about that. But when you really think about it, all they had to do, all The Undertaker had to do is just summon lightning, strike someone, and then win the championship. <laughs> Call it a day. <laughs> what? Yeah, and although the obvious answer was that it would get boring extremely quickly if the dead man used powers such as lightning in every match, yeah. it'd be nice to have some kind of kayfabe explanation from WWE. Number 6. The camera doesn't exist yeah. WWE wrestlers have a weird relationship with cameras. Uh -huh. Often wrestlers cut promos directly into the camera, yet sometimes they are booked to act like the camera isn't, isn't there. there yeah. WWE are prone, particularly over the past two decades, to produce backstage segments where a camera is clearly there, yet the wrestler fails to acknowledge it. This is even the case when wrestlers are sharing top secret information yeah. and they still divulge this private information with full knowledge that a cameraman is there in the setting with them. Now, TNA actually had a great answer to this, as it would often have talent acknowledge mm -hmm. the camera and even kick the cameraman out of the setting. They would even film the segment secretly as if the wrestler had no idea that they were being filmed. This was a great touch and it's definitely something top wrestling companies such as WWE and AEW should look to use. Yeah, if I, I would appreciate that. Granted, what I've liked that Triple H has been doing is putting, like he does interviews, like, you know, he'll have somebody interview somebody, but there's something happening in the background that you gotta pay attention to. You're like, yo, what's going on there? Like recently with Rhea and, um, not Rhea, uh, Dominic and Liv Morgan, someone was having some type of backstage interview and you see Dominic leave out the room. Or I think, was it uh, Liv? I forgot who left out the room first, but we'll say Dominic left out the room. Then Liv Morgan, like a few seconds later, left out that same room. But you have to pick up on it. So I like that they're doing that. That is that is nice because now you have to, it makes, it makes it seem as if every little backstage segment may have some type of Easter egg you may want to pay attention to that's going to be story relevant. In the future, I like that they do that. Though. Number five, supposed death. Here we go. The certain WWE matches, such as a buried live match, result in kayfabe passing of a wrestler. Yet when the wrestler who was seemingly killed off mysteriously returns, yeah. it's never logically explained. It's understandable why WWE don't offer an explanation for any supernatural characters that have quote unquote died. 
Yet when traditional wrestlers such as AJ Styles get buried alive and then magically come back, a kayfabe explanation is needed. It goes without saying that offering any kind of kayfabe explanation would be a difficult task, yeah. as there's no way of explaining it without sounding completely ridiculous. Yeah. So WWE have likely always believed that it's in their best interest to outright ignore the kayfabe plot hole. Number four, <laughs> banned from the arena. Whenever a wrestler is causing mischief, it's commonplace for an authority figure to ban the wrestler from the arena. However, a wrestler always seems to get around this uh -huh. by simply purchasing a ticket and acting like a fan in attendance. This makes no sense from a kayfabe perspective, because if yeah. the wrestler in question is outright banned from the arena, this surely means that they aren't permitted to purchase a ticket. This has been a loophole that has been exploited mm -hmm. for years, and WWE have never had a logical answer as to why they allowed their wrestlers to get away with it. Number three. And then you know they're going to get involved in whatever matches they're going to get involved in, even though they're quote unquote banned from the arena and they're there as a fan. <laughs> Shit's funny, man. <laughs> the, the announce table. The announce table is one of the most commonly used weapons in pro wrestling. Wrestlers have a habit of putting their opponent through the announce table and the spot always receives a thunderous ovation from the audience. Mm -hmm. For the spot to work and for the table to break cleanly, the wrestler will always clear the table completely so no objects are present. This is obviously for safety concerns, yet if the wrestler was trying to inflict as much damage Dang, as yeah. possible on you their opponent, you then surely it, it would be more fitting to keep the objects such as laptops, pens, and monitors on the table. Yep. Number two, contract signings. WWE loves to market and book a contract signing on TV for a major match. These types of segments are a great way to take a few to the next level and delivering the contract signing on live TV throws an added element of importance and legitimacy to the match in question. Only a select number of matches per calendar year are selected for contract signings, which begs the question, how are these matches chosen? And does mm -hmm. every match on the show require a contract? Yeah. This has never been clarified <laughs> by WWE, and you would have to assume that every pay-per-view match requires a contract. So does the authority figure at the time just go around seeking signatures? The kayfabe <laughs> answer is potentially that the authority figure may wish to present the contract signings for their biggest matches in a live setting. This in turn would spike a rating and give the greatest exposure to the featured match. Mm -hmm. and number one, wrestlers don't watch the show. Whenever WWE presents Raw or SmackDown, it's very much presented as a live broadcast, and the announcers and wrestlers address the fact that Raw or SmackDown is a show on the respective network. However, why don't wrestlers watch the show themselves? Over the years, there's been numerous examples of wrestlers failing to watch the product. This ridiculous trope usually comes down to a wrestler being clueless about something that was booked yeah. on a show, and this in turn makes them look completely incompetent <laughs> as a character. Facts. One wrestler who's broken this formula seems to be Kevin Owens. Owens often cites that he watches the show and has a good understanding of what occurred on prior shows mm -hmm. and what type of actions and behaviors he should expect out of certain wrestlers. And there you have it, folks. Facts. And it's just one of those, especially like the wrestlers that be gone, it be like, they don't keep up with the show, so do they know what's going on? Like Roman Reigns, perfect example. Roman Reigns, he, I know he's a busy man, you know what I'm saying? I think he's filming some movie. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he's filming uh, a movie. I'm not sure. Um, but you would think, you would think he would have called Paul Heyman up or would have said something, would have tweeted like, I didn't give that order what's going on here i saw what was you know what i'm saying I, I saw what what solo's doing what the hell's going on who is this i don't i don't i don't know who this bloodline is like you would think he would say something tweet something do something right but he hasn't and i get why they're not having him do anything more for the surprise i understand that but it's just very interesting like wrestlers that are injured or whatnot obviously they can watch at home and see you know the nonsense that boys is what well, people are saying, but I do like the point that he's saying there. Like, yo, you could you could watch the show. You you should know that they're trying to plot against you because they said it on camera. <laughs> so I don't know, man. This is a very interesting uh kayfabe breaking moments that they, you know, obviously trying to, you know, keep it, keep it quote unquote, you know, in kayfabe. But when you really think about it, like, no, that doesn't make sense. Let me know some other moments where you felt like, you know. There was like, when you really break it down, none of it makes sense. If it wasn't on this list already, love videos like this. This was pretty dope. But I appreciate all love, support, road to 150K. And I'm still here to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.